Hello there, how are you keeping? Okay, thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, I have a question. Um, I'm, I'm wanting to go about reporting a, a crime, and it's, 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 not, it's not your usual, it's not going to be your usual call, basically. What it is, is uh, I've been in touch with, with various different government agencies, the Department of Defence, um, the Civil Aviation Authority, about what I suspect to be um, chemical warfare crimes that are taking place in the skies of Ireland. This is kind of okay. Um, now, normally, if you go to make a complaint to a guard of shit calling, you would do so at your local guard station. Okay. You would go in and you would kind of basically. I mean, yeah, this certainly sounds like um, something out of the ordinary, all right? Yeah. Um, I, in fact, I, what I would do if I was you, I, I'd certainly look to speak to at least an inspector or mm -hmm. superintendent's clerk, at least, in, in your local guard station. Okay. And raise your concerns there and deal with them face to face on that one. Yeah. Um, now, that's my advice to you. I, I wouldn't be able to take a complaint off you, so it should be where the public relations office here. Oh, it's the public relations office. Oh, yeah, I'm on the website here now, and uh, oh, yeah, this is the, the other section, obviously, yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, what 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 do you do there to repair, like, uh, use press, like, is that it, or? No, well, I mean, there's, there's lots of different sections within Garda Shikana. We're based in the Garda headquarters, and then. Our function in this office is really to get, uh, keep um, uh, media informed in relation to ongoing investigations. Okay. Uh, for information and to kind of, uh, you know, impart information in relation to ongoing investigations. <clears throat> um, okay, well, apart from even reporting a crime, then I might be I, could, I might be onto the right number anyhow because I, I'm trying to get contact the media about this. Uh, I've tried to I've tried to ring into radio shows about it and. Um, you see, that wouldn't be our function. I mean, we, it wouldn't be our function to put you in touch with the media. I mean, you you would mm. do that yourself, you know, as a private citizen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would employ a PR company or whatever where you want to go with it, you know. Yeah. Um, that's the way you would do that. And that wouldn't be that we wouldn't be up for us to uh, to, uh, to contact media on your behalf. I'm afraid. No, uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. So, um, well, you see. Where's your local station? Let me ask you now. Sorry? Where's your local station? Where uh, are you? Yeah, Kilmore Key, County Wexford. Kilmore Key, County Wexford. Yeah. Um, you'd probably be as well to go a little further up the line from that, maybe go to a district office or a... Um, I don't imagine. I don't know where your local big... Uh, mm. Media go, are you? Where are you near? Yeah, Wexford Town would be the nearest. Wexford, like, yeah, um, yeah that, that's probably where I would go. Yeah. Okay. And... What do you... I guess this is for my own information. So what are you basing this on? Well, okay, well, basically, um, I, I, I've, been, I've been looking into this for a while now, about, about three or four years, um, about um, weather modification programs that have been taking place around the world for, for 15 plus years. And what, um, what, what these programs involve is releasing um, particulates, metallic and chemical particulates into the atmosphere. To, to control weather system basically weather systems to clean to seed clouds and, and things like that um, now when I started looking into a first I, I, I just thought it was some conspiracy theory or something but I've started I started looking into information uh, like government um, white papers and patents and all like US government patents um, proposing um, using weather modification programs around the world you know to uh, to basically, for economic gain and for military purposes as well. Um, but like, uh, I've just been led down a rabbit hole of of, of research basically, and I'm just I've, I've just come across mountains and mountains of. What's up with this theory, or is there are others with this uh, with this theory as well? So, or, um, sorry. Are you dealing with this theory, or is there? No, there there there's a good there's a good few to be to be. There'll be a good few of us sky watchers now in Ireland. There's a good few uh, activists on Facebook. But basically, there's, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of people that are aware of this, but there's not many people taking action about it because... I see you have... Um, what, what, sort of, what, sort of, what sort of proof do you have? I mean, I'll, look at, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you now. I'm a, I'm a civilian uh, member of the Garda Sheikhana, and uh, you see us working here in the, the Garda headquarters. And, yeah. You know, um, basically, I, I would be... Uh, what, what, you're asking me what proof do I have? Well, basically, I'd be, I'd, I'd be saying to you, I'm, I'm trying to devil's advocate for you. I'd be, I'd imagine you're going to make a complaint to, to your local guard station, and you know, yeah, you need to be armed with um, fairly detailed information. I, I have, I have tons of information, and oh, okay. this, 
Uh, well, you see, I was on to the Department of Defence yesterday, and I want to actually speak to the Minister himself now, and hopefully he's going to get back to me. But what I've done in the meantime is I was only on to his secretary, but I sent him on... I sent them on about 10 different documents. One, one of the documents, just, just for your own understanding there, I'll just tell you, it's, it's called the, the House of Commons Regulation on Geoengineering. Um, geoengineering is the, is the term which they use for weather modification. Basically, it's to engineer the planet, geoengineering, hence the term. And in, in this program, the Science and Technology Committee of the House of Commons wrote this out in 2009, and it's a 150-page report which basically goes into proposing... Um, uh, releasing uh, tons and tons of sulfates into the atmosphere every year to facilitate weather modification programs. Now, the cover story for implementing the programs is to reflect the sun back out to space um, uh, to to say to, to slow down global warming. And how how they intend doing this is to um, sp spray the sulfurs in the atmosphere, create artificial cloud, and hence uh, reflect the sun back out to space. And there's just any amount of documentation. There's another, there's another document called the Solar Radiation Management Government Initiative. It was written out uh, by the Royal Society, which is the oldest science academy in, in the world, uh, under the direction of the British government. And that was written out in 2010. And basically, they're a think tank organization that, it's, that set up conferences all around the world. They invite delegates from different nations along to, to uh, basically try to sell them the idea of um, solar radiation management as a solution to global warming. Mm -hmm. And basically, like, I, 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 so the more you're talking to me there, the more I'm kind of thinking, um, you know, it certainly seems like uh, an issue that could be raised with the Department of Environment. Is that, is that something you've done? You know what, they, they were my first port of call. I started making phone calls uh, only only last week. I've known about this for years, but it's just, it's it's so out there. I mean, who would bloody believe you? But I mean, I've got so much evidence now, and I've just, I've just got to, I've just got to go for this, and I've got to, I've got to just get evidence to, to, to people in the right places, you know? Yeah. But uh, I started at the, the Department of Environment, or the Environmental, did you say the Department of Environment? Yeah. Yes. Possible. Actually, no, it's the Environmental Protection Agency was my first port to call. I phoned them last week. Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're different now. Yeah. And then, then I was on to the Department of the Environment then, but basically the evidence that I had, apart from tons and tons of government um, documents and admissions by the United Nations that these programs are actually going on, apart from all of that, I actually, I've, I've got my own rainwater um, tested uh, down here in Wexford, and that, that, that was tested only um, about a month ago, and... Uh, I tested it after a very, very heavy spray day. You see, I see these, these spraying operations going on, and I tested it after a very heavy spray day. I took the water sample after a heavy spray day, sent it straight off, and the results returned, and all of the, all, the results are basically, the, all of the materials that, 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 that showed up in, in the results are, um, are, are um, c c con conclusive with uh, the, the patents, basically. And, uh, you know, so... I mean, there's high levels of aluminium found in it. I mean, for us, uh, from Garcia Khan's point of view, I suppose, we, you know, we, I mean, we investigate criminal um, uh, incidents, you know, yeah. and, uh, and also we have to act within the legislation and within the jurisdiction. Yeah. So that's where there might be some sort of fact. Yeah, yeah, you see, it's, 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 it's uh, Irish uh, airspace, you know, so I, I, I got onto the Civil Aviation Authority hoping that they might be able to do something and... I, I got talking to one of the main guys there, and he like he never heard about it. I didn't expect him to hear about it because this whole program is operated on a compartmentalised basis. Most, most people that are working in the airline industry don't even know what's going on. But um, um, did, you see, I, I, I imagine that they would be the people to get onto, like the a Irish airspace. You know, if if I'm not if, so too, I'll be honest with you. You know, I mean, to be honest, I'm sure not to 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 sound facetious, but uh, we probably have enough. Um, Crimes to be dealing with down here in Terra Firma, you know. Like I, exactly, I know. You see, this you is know, the thing, I know. I and understand your point of view, all right? Yeah, yeah. But look at that. You know, that's all I can really suggest that you do. That you would go to see here. Um, okay. The real issue. Um, get, you know, get make a note. Uh, you know, get a meeting. Make a note of the, of speaking to the the, yeah. you know, the superintendent, who's kind of most senior officer in your yeah. district area. Yeah. Do you think yeah, it might be worth? Do you think it might be worth phone? Do you think there has been a crime, or is it a critic? Is it a, is it really a matter for Garcia Coleman? Okay. Um, you know that that's that's what you should proceed really. Well, look at I tell you I don't I don't want to just leave it at a phone call with you. I I just want to send you a bit of information for you for no, yourself. No, 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 no,
I, 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 look at, uh, look at no, no, but I'm just basically, I, I don't say this to anybody rather than uh, without providing uh, some evidence of what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm not going to be phoning you again, but just for your own knowledge, I mean, in your own uh, citizen capacity, I mean, you, you have a right to know that this is going on. Um, I'm spending every okay, week. Okay, no, we're fine. Send it in. No problem at all. I mean, we're, we're, um, I mean, we're attached to the commissioner's office here. You know, and um, certainly you can, give, you know, you, you can send it in. I can really take cognizance of it. Listen, will you just give me an email address so I can? I'll send it there straight away there, and you can, you can just have a quick flick through it there yourself. Okay. Whenever, when you're on time enough. Press office at Garda. Hey. Press office at Garda. Oh, sure, it's on, it's on the website here. Is it oh. press office at Garda? Oh, yeah, yeah. I see the email here. Yeah. Uh, will I address it personally to yourself, or is it, will that just do like that? Well, I mean, there's no particular need to. I mean, it's a generally in inbox, you know. What I mean, okay. the, you, you know, there's no, there's no greater right. issue with doing that. Well, look, my name is T T Terry Lawton, okay, and I'll be sending okay. that. And uh, Terry Lawton is my name, and uh, that, there'll be an email coming from from my email address with that name uh, in, oh, about, okay. in about five and minutes. I'll, I'll keep an eye out. Have, have a quick have a quick browse through it. Um, we all need to know this is going on. I mean. Our weather has been modified. I know this. All of this crazy weather that's going on now—it's it's just absolutely insane what we're seeing. And I know for one hundred percent certainly that it is being modified to happen. Think, all right, Terry, I'll give you that. Yeah, I, listen, I, I, just before you go, I phoned up the Met Office on Friday now, and I got through to one of the main weather forecasters in the country. I won't even mention his name now, but uh, he 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 had he um, had acknowledged to me that he is aware of weather modification programs taking place around the Balkans and or different parts of the world, regional weather modification programs. But he said to be only small scale, to be only like to stop hail from falling on vineyards and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so that that to me was bombshell because I, I didn't re I didn't even realise that you know that whether he knew whether he knows yeah, whether or not. This modification, would you say? Are we kind of looking at corporations? Is that the kind of thing? Is it? Or? Oh, the, the the big biotech companies like Monsanto and Dupont, they're heavily invested in it. Basically, they're, they've been forcing agriculture. Uh, they've been forcing farmers. Um, and you know, farmers over to genetically modified f seeds for for decades now. Basically, uh, you know, when, when you can control the weather, you can bring swamps. You can swamp out land basically, and if a farmer's crop fails one year, the next year, if if um, if the weather is looking uncertain, and a, 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 a seed company has a solution to that problem, which which would be a, a swamp resistant seed, you know, the farmer is going to buy that seed. You know, and so the, these Monsanto, um, Dupont, all of these corporations are heavily invested in this. Uh, I've got documentational uh, evidence of that. They're the, one of the main shareholders on, on in this program, and you see, they set they're set to gain from it because there's a massive move over to genetically modified foods now, and uh, it's just not good because these foods have been proven in lab rat studies to create tumors, cause cancer, and sterilize after three generations. So it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, and I know how crazy this stuff sounds, and I wouldn't expect you to believe one more. Of her for one no, minute, no, 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 but you know, but like true, true, a stranger and think. I've heard plenty of crazy things, and uh, yeah, plenty of things, and there's always not normally an element of truth somewhere when it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, you sound perfectly reasonable to me. Yeah. Um, look, send it in, Terry. Okay. Oh, I mean, um, you know, there's not really an awful lot I can do for you. Here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I want to bring it to the attention of if you feel it's a criminal act. Yeah. You know, that's that's where that's where we come in, you know. Yeah. And then you know, if you go take advice off uh, the superintendent's office. Yeah. He can advise you. Yeah. If it's something that it, you know we feel criminal activity has occurred. Yeah. And then certainly we mm. the body should take out an interest, you know. But. Mm -hmm. And I, I know, I know, I know. I'm just, I, I need hardcore evidence. I know that, and I know that just even water, water, water samples is probably not even enough. But I know that this is going on, and if I could prove it, this, this is the biggest military operation in world history going on in the skies every day, all around the world. It's not. I know, I know. It's crazy. I'm, I'm, my next port of call is probably a Ministry of Defence. It was, or the Department of Defence. It's probably going to be the Army next. I don't know where to go. Surely, some of the. Um it sounds like a European issue. Like, I mean, yeah. Who's your MEP? I, mean, so I know. Go, but go chat to your MEP. I know, but the European, the European, um, the European Union and the and the the the, the, the um. The United Nations have written out treaties basically to legalise weather modification programs, but but just just regional weather modification programs. You see, but. You see, it's just pointless going to these because these are these these are the, the same th these are the signatories of these bloody legislations that are permitting these things to go on. So it's like it's basically like going up. Legislation in in Europe, then, are they? Sorry. 
They've been put into legislation in Europe. These Canada. programs have been put into legislation. I mean, there's a, there's a there's a Europe, the United Nations uh, Weather Weapons Treaty. I was, I'm going to send that on to you there now. That was written out uh, oh, a good few years back. I'm not sure of the year. But basically that legalises weather warfare. And again, weather warfare is the most powerful weapon on the planet. I'll just, before you go, I won't keep you any longer, but... Uh, um, weather warfare was used. It's been used in Iraq in recent in recent years. Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, it's been it's been used in. It was used first of all before D-Day. The RAF sprayed massive uh, amounts of uh, chaff, what they call it, into the sky or to, uh, conf to confuse radar systems, and that made the D-Day landings much more easier. The Germans didn't know what, who was coming from what direction because the, the radar systems were all, there was, they were all went haywire. And then you have Operation Popeye in, in Vietnam War where, where the Americans were able to swamp out the, the Ho Chi Minh Trail with seven feet of water within an hour. So like if you, if you can literally play God like that, I mean your enemy is goosed, you know? So it's, 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 it's more powerful, weather weaponry is more powerful than any nuclear power, any... any sorry? Yeah. No, hey, but he, this, this is the great secret about the Allied forces. They never want to win wars. They just want to sustain them, isn't that? It's because war, okay. war is a business. Point, maybe, yeah. Better, okay, that, all right. Yeah. Look at uh, Terry. It's been it's been uh, interesting talking to you. Yeah. Well, look at thanks thanks very much for listening, and sure, look at um, yeah. please please look into the information because this affects every man, woman, and child on this planet, not only in the country. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much. Very much. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.